Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to the week five of the UBL versus Frosted and her Copenhagen sauce box. Now, before going in, I do want to cover that. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to uh, make sure that my voice is syncing with the webcam. If that bugs you, I'm sorry. It will do that for a few, at least another week. Uh, we had this game on Sunday. Um, I believe it's Friday. This that is uploaded, uh, and I'm going away. Um, actually, this Monday to well vacation, basically. So I'm away at least one week. So I needed to have this one recorded for the team builder uh, going before, and of course the video itself. So the quality is going to be a bit lower this time around. I do hope you bear with me. I want to cover the team that I'm going up against, but also my plans for it. And also this time I didn't screw up the team page. If you look at down below, this is the team I'm facing up, and it's a Kurtana, Septo, Sukun, Dafan, Incineroar, Psygod, the 10% form, Hiriyama, uh, Lantern, Valplume, Tang, and Mega Dienchi. Now, I joked about this before, uh, more so again with CJ, which is another fellow Poxuber. Lantern is impossible to prep for, mainly because defensively it solves so much versus a lot of high tier threats. And that can be annoying, and um, this is, of course, no. No difference at all with me. Uh, should be said here that I think the main threats for me here is Skirtana, Zapdos, Dawn Fan to an extent, uh, Hariyama is annoying for me, Mega the I can't switch into. Uh, so those are Pokemon I assume in kind of come in. And then it's whether or not, like Lantern makes a ton of sense, uh, it always do. Suikun can be real annoying and we're gonna prep hard for that. Uh, but besides that, it can be anything for me as I don't really want to cover that too much. I just want to cover which Pokemon bring in and why I brought them. Um, not to be said that if you guys want to see my full team um, in these type of videos, make sure to say that in the comment section. I can definitely fill that out as there are five Pokemon left out, of course, in the team builders of our drafted 11 Pokemon. That said, the team is as follows. Do like this. Scissor. Um, standard Scissor. Adamant variant this time around with Technician. Shouldn't matter since when it may evolve to get Technician. Uh, stat distribution, uh, a lot of bulk. Uh, this bulk is mainly to kind of deal with Saigard head on, but also Dawn Fan. And to extend actually Chicken Gertan, if I'm forced to, as a full stand set, this should be able to do just about right. Uh, the sets here are Bullet Punch when it decides to show, U turn, Roost, and Defog. Defog is mainly here because I do have two Pokemon's weak to rocks, and I need to parry that somehow. And my other two Defoggers are less than ideal for this matchup. Uh, we're gonna follow that up with a Barbarical, this time a Wakamberry variant with Tough Claw. Um, and it's actually quite specially defensive here. Mainly it is here to bait um, Zapdos as well, of course, too. I think it's gonna be able to pull that off. Uh, really bulky, really solid bulk this time. Barbarical, while not the uh, best Pokemon around, has a solid special defense. And uh, it can take hits. And this is his main role this time around as I'm using the Stealth Rocker. Um, so it's Liquidation, Stone Edge, Stealth Rock, of course, and Earthquake. Earthquake is only there for Lantern. Uh, liquidation should be just fine about here. Valplume, while being an effective threat uh, and could wall this set, is very unlikely to come because I have a Jardos on my team. It's just, I don't see it. Um, so I could say that I'm a bit adamant going in there, but I think this will look just fine. And if, of course, I'm forced to, then Stone Edge is a play while they can get ranks on me. So, clearly not ideal. <laughs> Nick, the third one here is Kieran Black. I was, to be honest, deciding whether or not I wanted to be lonely or naughty, uh, because I do want to capitalize on Fusion Bolts to have at least a boosted attack, if anything. Uh, well, Choice Card Variant did consider Assault Vest because it makes sense. Mainly because Kieran do kind of function as a potential switch into a Zapdos, so and that could be quite right and exciting. Um, well, it is what it is here. This is a very, very offensive. Um, I do realize a mistake here. Um, we'll see how much this matters, because we already had a game, but this was unfortunate. Um, this this tells me a lot. That's <laughs> right, going to have this on the screen. No bulk. A bit of a speed here, be able to have speed, we got the NC. Uh, since we are naughty, so we're focused on that. We should have had the rest in HP, we do not. Uh, the combination here is Ice Beam, Outrage, Fusion Bolt, and Iron Head. So, scary stuff. 
scary stuff indeed. Next one is the Sea Bounce uh, Gyarados. Could be very key for this battle, uh, mainly because her team doesn't necessarily deal with this set that well. Uh, she has switch-ins, uh, she has Pokemon that can force this out, one being, as I said before, Lantern. Uh, but just also overall, Matang can take a hit, we can't really capitalize on it. Kirtana can potentially take a hit, but Sukuna is also defensive enough to force that out. Uh, and Sukuna, of course, depending on the set, could force this out with a roar. But we also have the aspect that it's going to be more crucial, and that is whether or not a Sea Fly knock it out. Depending on if it's bulky or not, a Sea Fly could very well take it out because it is an adamant set. Um, so we're gonna follow that up with, of course, the status region. We have some bulk, but overall I don't need necessarily all the bulk, I need more attack. It, like, basically I need to wall break this team as much as I can with Jardos. Uh, though it is a dedicated switch in towards Cortana. Together with Sister, mainly to not get too much momentum on Cortana. Depending on its sets, it can just be very annoying for me to deal with, so Jardos makes sense. Uh, so Bounce, Waterfall, Dragon Dance, Earthquake is only there for Lantern. And that's about it. Um, next one is Serora. Shook a very, very into summer on, mainly to deal with uh, her um, Dawn Fan, if I'm forced to stay in with his dad, but also to an extent Teriyama if it's a Soul Visor in with Earthquake. Um, should also be able to take potentially uh, Earth Power from Dianchi, though I do believe that would be a choke if she carried uh, Diamond, uh, Diamond Storm. Stats appreciation, kind of you know, the same stuff. We are adamants, we're very, very physical offensive. Uh, we have some bulk investment to us, but basically I just need to have a speed of so we can go adamant. Uh, we have Blasphemous, Fire Punch, and Bright, and Volt Switch. Nothing to it. Last set is probably one I'm most proud of, and that's just because it's a set I used before to be able to deal with Sukun when I don't have a Sukun switch. And usually in every draft I use, I have a Jelly Scent, which can taunt it, force it out. Um, I had three times where I faced a Sukun that I didn't have Jelly Scent, and I had Guard War with those times, and it was a sexual set. Use. I'm trying to rally up, but basically, I was kind of scared with the Sukun because it is a set that, all things consider, is uh, hard to switch into, can't set up. I can't necessarily force it out with the team I got. While Plasma Pit could very well want to KO it, it's not an option for me to consider I can free switch versus it, and that's an issue. Um, so, that's it for a timid set. Um, I think we needed to be timid here to outspeed yeah. um, the energy because we do go for some. No, wait. This is the wrong god where I brought. Never mind. It should be modest. Um, the Sasabusion here was 188. Basically, the Scarf variant here is able to outspeed the Mega the Energy, which is her fastest Pokemon field. Um, but besides that, the um, combination here are really, really well rounded. Uh, the idea here is to soak some damage, but also retaliate back. Uh, Sign Shock is there if the Sukun goes to Call Mine, we can recapitalize on that. And she lacks proper Moonblast switch ins. While Cortana is a resistant, uh, Cortana lacks fair special defense. I should be able to capitalize on that rather easily. And we have a Healing Wish in case something gets whittled down that needs to get a second wind. Uh, Looking the likes of Sarah Aura and Jaros would be in those kind of potential Pokemon to be able to force to do that. But overall, God War alone should be able to deal a lot of damage with this set. Uh, and we also have some bulk distribution here. This is basically to enable myself to survive. Um, this is absolutely the wrong God War. I didn't use this set. Hopefully, next opponent doesn't see this. Anyway, <laughs> this is a set I had. It was lower HP. For lower HP, we have 126, I believe. No. Basically, I feel this like. The speed investment, I'm sorry if I'm doing this, but I had the wrong God of War on the screen. Didn't mean to have that. Uh, things out like this was enough to uh, speed the energy, and then we had 44 instead of 2 distributed, uh, basically to be able to survive a diamond storm from the Dainchi uh, with ease. Um, if it is an offensive Dainchi, then it's not screwed. Uh, I can't do anything with the I have Shadow Ball, but I won't have that as a necessary means to deal with it. Uh, and I decided not to carry Focus Blast. Which could be annoying depending on the matchup, but overall, like I said, she lacks proper switching versus boom blast. And the thing that will switch into as well, which could be Matang if she carries it, would also be Valplum. And Valplum, of course, do not want to deal with potential Psy Shock. So, overall, I'm 
kind of happy with this team. I think it would work quite all right. Uh, the team I prepped for the most, or was scared most, most of it was what I said in the beginning. And uh, there were Pokemon that made more sense than the other, but for me, Mega Lianchi, absolutely. Lantern, I think was making a lot of sense. Hariyama is a third, then Sukun, Sapphos, Cortana. Um, potentially Dauphin. But overall, I wouldn't want to see Matang. I don't think it makes sense. Valplum, I think it's a tough buy. Cyber 10%, not that viable. The other, the other potential eight are aspects they're going to prefer for. And Incineroar, while being unorthodox, could very well do the Intimidate alone come to this game. So it was something I was, while not fearing it, I at the same time didn't prep too well for it. So we're going to have that covered, if anything. So with that said, we're going to have a transition. Um, this game, as I said before, due to the lack of time, is going to be pretty much the same as this, but you know, in a lower quality. So first of all, sorry about that, but I think you respect me more for it, but being honest. If you have respect, that is. I have no idea why I said that. It sounds really dumb. Anyway, transition. So right at the team builder. So what can I say here that really shouldn't or should be stated? First and foremost, Frost's team here looks so good on paper that it, it's beyond me. Um, we see Hiriyama, Kurtana, Sato Sukun, and Medienshi, which are threats we are prepping for and are ready to face off. But we are I was actually feeling Lantern makes more sense than Incineroar. And that's not a bad thing. It just means that Incineroar is a Pokemon that I need to <laughs> well, deal with in the best way I can. Since I didn't necessarily predict or plan for it, I felt really, really rusted here. There was really no way of me of actually doing well here, uh, at least not versus that. So with this in mind, um, I thought my best switch in to start off with was Secure and Black. Knowing that, I decided to not do that. I decided to actually go with Gardevoir. Basically, my main idea here was that let's see if she leads off Omega DNC. We can take any hit from that effortlessly and we should be able to capitalize on it um and that was my initial thought like basically her only real switching for um guard war is cartana and she's not going to lead up with cartana when i have a cure in black um that could potentially be scarves i mean it's too big of a risk uh, and i have jardos which shakes it to an extent so yeah i mean with that said let's go into the game i kind of feel i'm overstating my time but quite frankly, I was really scared of this Frosted because she plays rather offensively herself, and that could lead to, to me lose momentum rather easily if she predicts right. And she starts off with Hiriyama, which is great for us, mainly because we get to trace out from Hiriyama. Trace his, uh, well, I was hoping it wasn't a Guts. Luckily for us, it isn't. It is a Sheer Force, which means something is gonna die. Like, basically, a Sheer Force boost in Moonblast takes out almost anything on her team. Without a doubt, that she decided to sack off Crawshonks. Um, now, I don't believe this Pokemon was by any chance uh, a Salt Fist, but one thing that stood out for me was that for me, not predicting for Pokemon at all and getting that knocked out turn one, kind of kind of cool actually. I'm super happy with how this turn went. Though, don't, don't let this be, you know, an occurrence appearance because this the game didn't necessarily go as I was thinking. As she is switching to the obvious play, which is Cartana. I don't want to get this thing beast boosted. So I switch into my Jaros. She predicts this extremely nicely. Gets in Zapdos. Now I was thinking, oh shit, you know, what do I do now? Um, well, the right response here, I, I don't stay in, that's for sure. Uh, I actually decided to switch into my Cure and Black. Now we know from the team builder that I actually failed to invest a few of the defenses on Cure and Black. Now that itself doesn't matter because we will take any hit from this Pokemon, but I did not predict Asian power. I didn't count for Asian power whatsoever. And what will take this below 50% to be able to retaliate? Another thing we didn't prep for was Asian power boost. And this means that Zapdos now wins versus Cure in Black. Um, I have no switches for this. I have nothing <laughs> to do versus this Pokemon. My only plan here was to actually go to my Sarah Aura, forcing her to go for Plast or Heat Wave, uh, get chip on this, switch in Barbarical, pop the Walking Berry, and take it out with a liquidation. Um, only plan I had, uh, but she keeps going for Nation Power. I do find out later that she's actually Scarfed, but at this point I had no idea she was. Uh, but she not going for Heat Wave means that we can take a potential Heat Wave, but basically all this thinking is. She's either being cheeky or not, but I can definitely stay in here safely and go for a Volt Switch. Uh, but she just switched out and she goes into Cartana again. 
what this leads me is to of course bring back my gyarados actually effortlessly and gyarados is a massive threat for her and even more so now that i come in freely uh, i won't go for dragon dance though i felt that you know she could potentially see that one coming so my easiest play here was to predict sapos coming in try to get as much damage on it as much as i can basically to force it to roost next turn that was my only thought as uh, this is to an extent what happens um, basically, I pull a Vipsis on her and uh, I, I get a really, really nice crit here, which clearly helps me a lot here because it does knock out Zapdos. But also means that, you know, we, we get a momentum that was not supposed to happen. So she brings in Molly, and I was feeling here was, you know, I, I have no reason to keep our Barrical. At this time, it doesn't do anything. The two Pokemon that were weak to rocks are dead. So, so I thought, let's switch that in. And she goes for Thunder Punch. Um, we take this fairly well. Um, my thought here is only to side play my Barbarical. I was feeling back and forth, you know, could I... I can't throw another Thunder Punch. It is whether or not I can take a Bullet Punch. I want a base for that, so I don't risk too much damage onto my guard board because I can take out this Pokemon without other means. But it looks like she doesn't have it. I get my Rocks up, which... Well, the reason for it is because I don't want to knock out Hariyama. You know exactly why, because we don't see the Bullet Punch. That means we can trace the share force, and also means that we can keep it because it, right now only Cortana switches out. The other Pokémons aren't a potential threat versus Gardevoir, and that's that's a relief. <laughs> and I felt really, really ballsy here, uh, but yeah, well for Moonblast. Luckily, like I said earlier, we don't see anything like you know, of course, the Mac or Bullet Punch would could have done well. He wouldn't take it out, but it take us out, but it would do a lot of damage. Now she switching back at the end, she which at first I thought was weird, but it's only more positive for us because it means that we get to take this Pokemon out. Now I was fearing to an extent that um, she would be invested offensively to be able to take us out with the Diamond Storm. You know, all those thoughts kind of kicks in as you know a turn like this do come around. Uh, she was going for Diamond Storm. And it does so much. It does way more than Calcor. We do live it. I don't know if that's luck or, or anything like that, but she has absolutely investment in that attack. But we do knock out the and she, you know, Share Force boosted Moonblast. You you're not taking this. Uh, so her switching now is to go back to Cortana, which I believe would have been the ideal switching from the get-go. Uh, I'm absolutely not staying into this. I really want to capitalize on Healing Wish. I have now no real reason like to use Carnivore versus Sukyun uh, because, well, it doesn't have an HP left. As uh, she goes for um, a knockoff here, which is an excellent play in all the right ways, but versus, you know, with teammate and whatnot, it's probably less ideal as uh, I can freely here go for Dragon Dance. Now, I was, you know, all the Sukyun and Cortana left. To an extent, their Sukyun can beat any team in it how <laughs> it fits. Um, I was really hoping she didn't have Protect. Uh, did she have Protect? Uh, basically, I would have lost any momentum again with Jardos here. And uh, if she had Roar, it would just turned even worse. But yeah, clearly she doesn't have that, so it becomes whether or not she's a bulky or not. If this is offensive Sukyun, that boy is gone. Uh, but if it is a defensive one, I actually lose and she could go for a Roost and I am forced to start Dragon Dancing. Um, and hope the C-Bound or regular Bounce eventually does work. But like I said, that was my only real play, but I don't have to take a stand for that because we do knock this Pokemon out effortlessly. So now Cortana is the only Pokemon left, and I really don't want to be too cheeky here. Uh, she has nothing that can take me out anyway. A Leaf Blade does roughly around the hundreds, a bit over, so I don't have reason to switch out. But what do you know? At least, you no, know, the Hack Scott isn't too unfair and at least help her out a little bit. Knock out, of course, Gyarados, but. At this point, being locked into Leaf Plate is not the best thing, as I can easily go to Fulgore, my Mega Sister, which has just to hit the field, and uh, all I really can do is go for U-Turn. Uh, now, I was feeling whether or not I should just go for Bullet Punch and U-Turn, but I thought, you know, U-Turn should be in close enough range to take. Now, we are, while we're not fully offensive, we have some uh, offensive stats invested, and usually, well, Cortana's doesn't. Um, but we fail here. U-turn actually is so close to now, but it really isn't. Um, but we can at least do the obvious play, which is go back to Gardevoir or you know, any Pokemon I left. I think, believe it was Sarah or I could have been a switch into. It doesn't necessarily matter. 
and then switch back to Sizzler and wrap the game from there. Uh, so we'll, we'll get our first win, a 3-0 versus Frosted. Um, I was kind of looking back at the game itself, I really believe that Crit with Jardos is probably the one that is most crucial. Um, we, like I said, we do find out later that uh, Frosted had her Zapdos um, choice scarf, so we know for one thing that uh, she couldn't roost and recover, but at the same time, like I'm starting to think of what would my switch-ins be and how would I parry that. Um, I think Serora would have been the switch in and uh, potentially gain something out of that if she didn't go over Heatwave because Heatwave actually at that point could have been a 2 hit kill even without that plus one. But that's like the only fun process I have. Um, and if she locked herself into that, well, I guess I would go for a Vault Switch and by that means find out she was Scarf and she would knock me out. I would go to Barbarical and probably go for Rocks. Uh, while she switches out and will automatically kill the Zapdos, but I wouldn't have the option of Serora left, and it would or not, I would have win or lost by 2-0 from there, but at least that would have been a case to, to happen from that point on. But yeah, besides that, I felt it was a rather clean game. I'm, I was happy with my performance. The, the turn 1 is so crucial for me, mainly because I do get a Moonblast boost, that, or Shear Force from Hiriyama, and a Moonblast that is just impossible for her to switch into, and I really feel she... She got behind too early and considered how offensive her team was that's that's something that happens to all of us like we play hyper offensively if the turn one is really bad there is just no way of recover and i think this is how that looks i think she still paired me rather well but after the crit with the waterfall there was really nothing left for her she was basically waiting out the turn um and so i feel well i'm being honest uh, i'm I win on I win on um, the easy way. Like the 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 hacks itself is such a huge aspect that I feel I couldn't justify it at all more than you say oh, I'm sorry about that because I really 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 do realize how much that crit means in my favor. It's just it's so unfair. Uh, but besides that, uh, Frost, like I said, played this game really well. I think the team was just about right. And uh, not seeing a lantern having thrown off, but at the same time we don't know what that incinerator set really was. And I really hope to be able to see that on her team builder. So with that said, of course, as always, do check out her channel. Frosted is an amazing pocket tuber. I'll enjoy watching her battles. Um, she's very smart, very charismatic as a player alone. And uh, her sets and her way of playing is really, really, really impressive. Um, she's one of those players I would say can shift playstyles and be successful in them, no matter how she changes them. And that's a perk I think a lot of people are hard to prep for. Me included, facing up against another hyper offensive team, which I didn't believe was going to be hyper offensive, had me thrown off. And hacks might actually be the very factor that made me win this game without having to take the tough calls. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching as always. Like I said, check out our channel, and I'll see you next week versus Auto. And, and, and that's going to be something else. I really need to win this game. That's to do with the rest of the season. I'm, I'm 1 of 4. That's kind of cool. I am at least not. You know, in a, in a spot, that, oh, I'm 1-5, it's even worse. I at least have another perfect loss record. I, I'm happy about that. Anyway, guys, take care. Bye.